We found that the, the deer had chewed through the wings and chewed through the legs without actually swallowing any of the skin or any of the meat. Have we some sort of giant reptile that's still wandering around the forest country of Australia? Animals do have episodic memories. They do have recollections of particular events and that these help them make decisions in their, in their lives. What could turn non-meat eaters to animals hungry for flesh? Are giant lizards stalking Australia? And how do certain animals retain extensive memory? Animal X investigates the weird world of animal mysteries. First to an eerie island, home to creatures that have become freaks of nature. Since time began, survival has depended on our ability to adapt to an ever-changing environment. But an increase in the erratic changes in our modern world has meant certain animals have gone against their natural instincts in this ongoing battle for survival. Off the shores of Scotland lie two remote islands where introduced species of deer and sheep have found a sinister solution to surviving their harsh surroundings. These normally mild-mannered herbivores have become cold-blooded killers. In the torchlight, there was a stag with a, uh, uh, with a shearwater in its mouth, holding it by the head, and it was still flapping. It seemed fairly unusual, certainly, um, the idea of them actually killing the, the, the birds and eating them. We don't know what, what attracts the, the sheep and the deer to kill birds. Animal X travels to Scotland, to the remote island of Rum, and later, Fula, to investigate the phenomenon of killer sheep and deer. Peter Wormel, a former nature reserve warden on rum, is one of the few who has witnessed the grisly dietary deviation of the local red deer. I just wondered what on earth had, had chewed the head and, uh, and legs off and left the whole body. And one night in the torchlight, I saw a stag with a shearwater in its mouth. It was munching on its head and the, the bird was still flapping. Its, its wings were still flapping and the body just fell to the ground and the stag ran off. Malcolm Whitmore, the current nature warden, has often observed the deer chewing old bones, a habit which mineral deficient animals adopt to survive. But he agrees with Peter Wormel that the act of killing live chicks is one step beyond. I was surprised. Yeah, um, but then thinking through it logically, you can, you can maybe imagine that uh, deer coming across dead shearwaters would chew them, and then it's only one step on from that to them coming across live shearwaters and uh, actually picking them up and, uh, uh, and finishing them off. In 1988, the unusual predatory behavior of the Rum Island deer was formally documented by Professor Bob Furness. We found that the, the deer had chewed through the wings and chewed through the legs, removed all the bones from the legs and all the bones from the wings, without actually swallowing any of the skin or any of the meat. It's something we couldn't understand, but it seemed at the time that it must relate to some sort of deficiency in, in the diet of these herbivores. A few years later, further north on the Shetland island of Fula, Professor Furness was shocked to discover another species of seabird was falling victim to a similar fate. We discovered every year when we went into the tern colony that a small number of terns would be missing legs or missing a wing. We, we didn't think it was sheep because we assumed that sheep would, would just not do such a thing. And then one year we actually saw sheep coming through the tern colony and chewing their, their legs off. Like the deer on rum, this herd of primitive sheep was introduced to their harsh island home generations ago where they had been forced to populate or perish. But why have they resorted to killing to survive? It seems to suggest very strongly that the, the deer and sheep have, have developed this habit because of the, the nutritional deficiencies in their environment. There's quite a lot published over the years about 
um, animals chewing bones that they find on the ground, and this seemed to be an extension of that. In Australia, at the University of Melbourne, Dr. John Blair West has spent more than 25 years studying a parallel situation, cattle with an appetite for bone. There's something in a bone that attracts a cow. And interestingly, it isn't the meat or tissues that are attached to the bone. Known as osteophalgia, Dr. Blair West's experiments uncovered that cows attracted to old bones were deficient in phosphorus. But the question was, how did they know that bone chewing would replenish this mineral? If we knew what it was that brings those cows to take those bones, and we could put that magic material into a, a mineral mix and deliver the phosphorus straight to the animals, that would save a lot of trouble. The same question remains unanswered in Scotland, where the deer and sheep have taken bone chewing a step further. Animal X brought Dr. Blair West and Professor Furness together to share their findings so far. It's really not understood how they work out what to do to, to get these minerals. I would dearly love to know if these animals, these sheep and these deer, had a low plasma phosphate concentration because then it would make a lot more sense that they'd be going looking for bones. This appetite for bone raises the frightening issue of BSE. More commonly known as mad cow disease, this fatal condition is contracted by eating infected animal tissue. Dr. Stephen Dealer has studied the disease since 1988 when it struck British herds in epidemic proportions. BSE is something called a spongiform encephalopathy. That in fact describes the pathology, the damage that's being done to the brain of the animal in which it appears just to go like a sponge. It's a fatal disease, there is no method of treatment. Could it be possible for the birds of Ram and Fula to contract BSE and pass it up the food chain to the deer and sheep that eat them? Every species has been shown to be open to infection from BSE, every one. At the moment we have not, you know, got no proved cases of this kind of a condition in birds. So at the moment we're all crossing our fingers and hoping that by osteophagia of, of, of bird bones won't, won't transfer the disease, we hope. Could herbivorous animals that kill to satisfy their own dietary needs be pushing the boundaries of evolution too far? Will this lead to further diseases that we do not understand? Or is it simply nature taking its course? They're simply behaving in a way that um, gives them the, the diet that they need without even being fully aware of what they're doing and, and how to do it. But unfortunately, we don't know everything. We can't know everything. And so we are taking risks. We are heading in, into the dark with some of these things. And to some degree, we have to beware. From the evolution of one island species to the extinction of another. After the break, Animal X goes on the hunt for the Megalania, an enormous reptile some say still stalks remote areas of Australia. Megalania, as far as we know, is the largest land-living carnivorous lizard. I suspect that if you met one of these in the bush, you probably wouldn't live to tell the tale. 